A man who's raised penguins his entire life falls on hard times and must sell them. He realizes he must drive them into town and bring them to the zoo. Would you believe, on the way there, his trailer, tractor, whatever the hell, breaks down. He's stuck with 50 penguins on the side of the road. Along comes another tractor trailer. He waves them down, says, please help, sir. Would you believe I'm trying to get these penguins to the zoo? I'll give you $100 to take them if you would. The man loads them up and drives into the city. A short while later, the man who raised the penguins drives into town and sees the man he gave the $100 to walking by on the sidewalk, followed by 50 penguins in a line. He pulls over and says, hey, I thought I asked you to take these penguins to the zoo. The man replies, I had change left over. I'm taking them to the movies. Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. Um, I was just uh, tweeting that uh, my guest is on. We're about to go live. Forgive me. A little slow catching up. How are you? Hopefully, a little more focused than I might be. Oh, friends, the last 36 hours has been so stressful. It's all I can do to not drink myself into oblivion and barely hold myself up to talk to you now. We have moved from one home to another. And no, I'm not going to bitch and moan. I'm not going to compare it to other difficult, stressful things in life. I'm simply going to tell you, I can't believe the hard part is over. Now. Jamie and I are playing the game. I like to, we like to call, I believe she named the game as always. Where's this go? Where's this go and where is blank? <laughs> Where's this go and where is blank? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's so amazing to where have your bags? entire I, life. I, I, somebody could find me the trash bag. In I boxes. Find the trash bag. <laughs> the simplest things. In, in this case, she says, where are the trash bags? I don't know. No one knows. Oh God, it's so ridiculous. I suppose I could walk to the CVS down the street and get uh Oh, no, bags. you'd be damned. As the, <laughs> you, with the nickname of Depression Baby, you're not going to spend a dime on trash bags knowing you have a full box from Costco with 470 trash bags in a box. And you're not going to get new ones. They're there somewhere. You know what? I think I left them behind. I think Denmark. you did. Yeah. But I think I, I left to, some sodas I behind. I have to go back tomorrow. I realized today... Why? Why are we doing it? Sorry. Sorry. Moving Sorry, on. Moving but this, on. As you can see, we've now acted out. Why explain when you can show? <laughs> this is all it's been, and um, the cat has just finally ca come out from under the bed. And uh, it was uh, barely stretching, but I coaxed the cat downstairs, and it was not a pretty sight. We will report the progress of the cat in the weeks to come. Um, so many things, but most importantly, since I saw you last, I, uh, you've heard me tell, I'm sure, many times that I was born in San Francisco. And uh, they are now the world champions of the baseball game, having uh, somehow shellacked the Texas Rangers four games to one, Sammy. Did you see four it coming? To, I sure did. Well, I know you bet on them and you predicted victory, but four games to one? Uh, Come I, on! I have Don't a witness. Don't pull a Rotman. No Rotman. I have a witness. <laughs> I said six. Rotman said my, six, he admitted. My, my lovely girlfriend Eve was a witness. See? I said they will either sweep them or win it in five games. See, I don't like the hedging. What are you playing, million dollar money drop? You gotta give me one answer here. Maybe. 
I said four or five. Uh huh. You did. You said four or five. Four or five. Yeah. As opposed to somewhere between four and seven. Yeah. The president would win, or he might not win. Eh, it's not quite the same. <laughs> no. Not quite the same. I don't think it's quite the same. Uh, so, Sammy, you won a lot of money. I did. I did. I did okay on this uh, this World you, Series. You you gambled illegally on the game. On uh, the I think series? I gambled legally on the game. Did you? I think so. Did you use a website? Maybe a bookie. Maybe. It's an overseas thing, uh, yeah. so it's legal there. You, you, you shipped your money offshore, did you? Uh, they shipped it back right to... I don't know why I'm going to do that. Yes, no, they shipped are you, it to... Are you, are you I, waiting on a check from the Bahamas? I am waiting All on right. a check. <laughs> Shouldn't I be doing my... Mechanics? Yes. Um, congratulations to San Francisco Giants. The players on the Giants team uh, during the playoffs, certainly during the series, were often described as a bunch of misfits. Or the Dirty Dozen, I believe, was one moniker given. For me, they were a reminder of a certain recurring gag during the last 45 minutes of one of my top five films of all time, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. In the aforementioned latter part of the film, the fellas are chased from state to state by the best posse that's ever lived. Sorry, P. Diddy. Butch and Sundance kept asking when peering off into the distance at the posse still on their trail, who are those guys? That's what the Giants reminded me of this year. Congrats to the team, the entire staff, as well as the fans of the world champion, San Francisco Giants. World champion. Sorry that uh, Thailand didn't get a team this year. A special congrats to uh, an old pal who I've known since we were about 14. Uh, some of you may know him because in 1983, on a warm 4th of July in New York, as a young man of only 25 years, he pitched a no-hitter for his team, the Yankees. Since the start of this millennium, he's been the pitching coach for the Giants, and there isn't a person who watched the series that could argue that the Giants became this year's world champs more than any other aspect. Because of more of any aspect, it was their pitching. So congrats, Rags, your baseball nickname, Dave Rigetti. You're now the official pride of Pioneer High School. I bow to thee. There he is, number 19. How yeah, Sammy, a little sidebar? Yeah, sidebar. Special thank you from all the San Francisco Giants fans to the Chicago Cubs, who may I remind you, <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. You go ahead I and know you are, it. and you're right. I'm absolutely right. We backdoored it. They backdoored it. They won three out of four games at in San Diego against the Padres yeah. to keep the Padres from winning the Maybe National Maybe that was West. a part of my thing already. I was going to mention it? it. Were you? Yeah. I don't think so. And here's how I was about to mention it. All right. I'd like to thank the Chicago Cubs no, organization no, no, this is for this sucking is beyond belief. What the? And allowing us to win three of four, was it? The Padres sucked. The Cubs. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's right. The Cubs beat the Padres. Beat the Padres. Yeah. Three out of four games I'd like at to home thank the Chicago Cubs for sucking beyond belief for no, the you're... better part of the year and then somehow pulling up their bootstraps yes. in the last three-game series I'll against what, the Padres. It wasn't just the last three games. It was the whole last 30 games when Lou Piniella retired early and Mike Quaddy took over as manager. He went. You uh, just made this about the Chicago Cubs. 20, 23 and 13, I think. Congratulations, Sammy. Oh, it's fantastic. You're welcome, Giants fans. That's all I have to say. Yeah. You're we welcome. could have never done any of it without the Cubs. Well, you would not have uh, necessarily made it to the postseason, so uh, that is a true statement you just made. <laughs> Jamie, you want to chime in a little something? We went right over my Rigetti joke. <sighs> oh, man. Oh, no. We're not done with the Rigetti joke. That's definitely in my notes. So I stop in to, to say hello to Rags, my uh, high school chum. <laughs> Who, by the way, never pitched a game in high school. We were a championship team all three years. Played center field, about a hundred buck fifty he weighed. Played center field, never pitched a ball, and um, uh, it remarkably became a six foot four, two hundred pounder uh, pitching sensation. Who, on the fourth of July in nineteen eighty three, when he pitched a no hitter for the Yanks in the stands that day, uh, former President Richard Nixon, who then surprised Rigetti in the dressing room. Coming up from behind him and Jamie, he said... Uh, Rigetti. One more time. Uh, Rigetti. That's my Nixon. <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's like one of my five I've been doing the David Fry Nixon <laughs> since uh, 1970. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was pretty damn terrific. So uh, I tell the story to Jamie, and then for two weeks all I hear is Rigetti. Rigetti. Um, so God bless you gotta Ra do this, Rags. Too, you gotta be like, yeah, nice. Well, now, now it's becoming the Dave Thomas we're getting. Uh, no. All right, let's move on before I lose my mind to Ask Kevin, everyone's favorite portion of the show. Ask 
Ask Kevin. Wow, it sounded like we had a little uh, graphic. This one from at JP Manu, because that's a name. What, is that the name? It is. Yeah. He's, a, he's a well known actor. Actually, JP Manu. Is it JP Manu? Well known actor? Well known actor. We know him from ER, among many other things. There's Off like the 700 people have been on ER as a regular. Could you narrow it down just the field a little bit? No. <laughs> JP Manu, how are you, sir? And congratulations on your fine work on ER. What is chutzpah? He asks. Are you fucking serious? You're in show business and you need to know from me what chutzpah is? You know what you have. Chutzpah. You just proved it by asking that ridiculously stupid question. Oh. Oh, I took a, a slap. <laughs> This was your fear. I tell you, he's I... a friend, and what do you do? You well, you're still pissing me off with that Cubs crap. Sorry I took <laughs> it out on you. Sorry I took it out on you, JP. Chutzpah is simply moxie. There you go. <laughs> and or nerve. All right, this one is from Galapagosian. Is that the name? Any idea? Palagosian. Palagosian. Sure, thanks, Dr. Chen. Why does a Palagosian... Why does the archive jump from... 70 to 86, what did I miss? I believe you're referring to the archive library of these episodes known as Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. They jumped from episode 70 to episode 86 because we had to re-edit and uh, offer them up on the iTunes by this individual uh, interview. So uh, there were several shows where there were two different guests interviewed separately. And then uh, we got to number 86. So you didn't miss nothing between 70 and 86 will be the much shorter version. And this last question comes to you from Jeff Jones, 74. Have you started shooting Kevin Smith's new movie, Red State, yet? Do you get shot in this one? Mm -hmm. I don't understand the question. Why would you, why would you ask that? Why would you want Kevin to know got if, shot. I, if, I got, if I got shot? How is that a thing? Did Kevin get shot? It is a thing in my house. What, how does it work? Your mom goes in on Sunday into the room to watch TV, and she finds a movie I'm in by f going through the satellite dish, because you put enough out there, and eventually you'll find something. And she and then stops she... watching when she gets shot, and then she enters another room where somebody else is and goes, oh, Kevin got shot. <laughs> and then she stops. It's a beautiful she's... Sunday tradition. Um, I shot already the Kevin Smith motion picture that he wrote and directed called Red State. It's pretty damn terrific. And whether or not I got shot is none of your fucking business. You'll have to see the movie. You'll have to plunk down $17 and go see the movie. Um, what did you hear? I don't understand. Ah, all right. Um, is this the Larry King game? Is that what we have? Did Mike, did you uh, explain the Larry King game to our, what do you got there, a little coffee, J-Mac? It's a little coffee for you. J-Mac, did you have a birthday? I did. Between last uh, show and this one? I did. That's so weird that you would mention that. When did you, uh, what did you turn, 29? Uh, 25. Third time, the third annual 25th birthday. No, I'm not buying any of that. It's real. I love when the kids today don't even fess up to their age. I mean, I'm not 28. You been out there? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Talk Is to me in your 50s, punk. It's a cruel world. Actually, you're not allowed to have a, your own past until you turn 30, I find. Is that so? Yeah. Somebody in their 20s says, you know, I remember well, what when... About, Sam Nobody and I you. act like we're 40, so... Well, you are. Well, he's you're more so 50. both 20s going on 50. You are. All right. Tracy Austin, no relation, <laughs> at Dayton a Tracy, nice, offers up this Larry King game. My... <laughs> My driver's license, worst Larry King impression ever. My driver's license, by the way, not as bad as my Don Adams. What the fuck happened in the opening? What was that? Exactly. What was it that? It steered off the rails instantly. My brain went, doesn't sound like Don Adams. Stop talking. Oh, I thought you were doing Inspector Gadget. Yeah, that's what it was. My driver's license has been I revoked. I know, Rotman. I know they're the same person. All right, Larry King game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's falling apart. My driver's that's license bit. has been revoked for years. Occasionally, I will slip my driver a Hunsky to give me his hat and the keys, and off I go. <laughs> Muckawanaga, Wisconsin. Hello. Is that anywhere near the correct pronunciation, Muckawanaga? Muckawanaga. Close. Uh, please, 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 could I win a coffee mug 
instead no. of a T-shirt. No, they cost too much to ship. Please, can I win a coffee mug instead of a T-shirt? No, because it costs eight dollars to ship. So no. <laughs> Unless they, if they want to give me eight dollars, then they can have a coffee mug. Wow, she has spoken. <laughs> Depression baby has spoken. Because the T-shirt cost me a dollar. Guess 50. who the Jew in the family <laughs> is? Um. All right. No, is that coffee for our guests? Fly it on in. Yeah, my uh, just go underneath the radar there, and you're you're a okay. <laughs> there he goes, the birthday boy. Never felt so 28. During his commencement speech to the graduating students of the University of Wisconsin in 2004, my guest today offered up a piece of insight titled "Everything I Need to Know in Life I Learned on My Way to a Humiliating Audition." I found this to be absolutely captivating. There were six different things on the list. I choose number five to share with you now. Listen. Number five, listen. It is the most difficult thing an actor can do, and it is the most riveting. You can't afford to spend your life like a bad actor stumbling through a predetermined performance that is oblivious to the world around you. We can't afford it either. Listening isn't passive. It is an act of liberation that will connect you to the world with compassion and be your best guide as you navigate the choppy waters of love, work, and citizenship. And then finally, number six, <laughs> take action. Every story you've ever connected with, every leader you've ever admired, every puny little thing you've ever accomplished is a result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of circumstance or you can be the active hero of your own life. Action is the antidote to apathy and cynicism and despair. You will inevitably make mistakes. Learn what you can and move on. At the end of your days, you'll be judged by your gallop, not by your stumble. I am unbelievably proud to uh, uh, welcome to this table the giver of that fabulous commencement speech, the author as well, as he went on to bust some serious balls of uh, the president who was off at, at another college of 5,000 students, by the way. I forgot about that until I read your uh, dossier. He was off uh, giving a commencement speech to 5,000 students. And um, my guest here was insisting that he had not written his own commencement speech. Mr. Bradley Whitford, sir. How are you? Thank you for How joining are us. You? It's wonderful to be here. You, um, you, you braved the 110 closed. What happened? It, uh, yes, the 110 was closed. Anybody who lives in L.A. knows that driving from Pasadena to Santa Monica is like uh, driving from Poughkeepsie to Bangkok. <laughs> and... Um, yeah. I got on the thing, it was beautiful, and then it was totally shut down. Any idea? Why? What? Because, well, yeah, it confirmed uh, what I've known all along. It, you know, my suffering is profound and unique, and I'm God's victim. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Job in mascara. Uh huh. So if you're looking for the center of the universe, look no further. Look no further. I see. Look no further. Uh -huh. It just confirmed my worldview. Learn are you? Are we going back to the Larry King thing, by the way? Eventually. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I that's, love a, Larry that, that's King. at the end. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jamie, my Jamie. wonderful better half, who uh, won't let me spend a dime, mm -mm. came up with the Larry King game. I, 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 I find Larry King fascinating. Utterly, right? Yeah. See, I, I and, know, I, and I, I, tr I, I really like him a lot. Yeah, as a person or on the show? As a specter, <laughs> no, I, no. As a person, and, and at, uh, at times on the show, yeah. I find it uh, I, there's something interesting about it. Have you ever met him? Have you? I uh, yes, I um, became a fan of his when he just just had a radio show, an overnight radio show on Mutual Radio, mm. uh, long before the CNN. And I would be driving home from gigs uh, in your overnight hours, and I would listen to his show, and it was absolutely riveting because he was about as self-absorbed as, uh, as anyone could be, and yet conducted these fantastic interviews. Um, and I just loved the way, he, back then, he would bring the thing back to himself, no matter what the topic was. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's almost kind of a zen. Yes. It's almost kind of a, 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 a zen approach to interviewing where like the Zen master doesn't worry about hitting the target, mm -hmm. so he doesn't worry about right. doing any research. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no! You know, or finding out anything uh, 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 
you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, what, uh, I'm sorry to jump this. No, back. no, no, please. Um, I'm blanking. We're Hit all over the map. Hitler's before. girlfriend's name. Ava. Ava Braun. Ava, Ava. The softballs. I the, think it's the, important to, to acknowledge that you purposely forgot Ava's name. You have removed that from your memory <laughs> banks, and I think that that's commendable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to know who she was. No, no, no. I don't need to no, remember. No, 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 no. No, why remember? She could have killed him. She could have. But, anyways, back to your story. If Larry so. King was interviewing Hitler, he'd say, So, <laughs> you and Ava are building a summer house. See? You know, it's like, it's like the, <laughs> you the Holocaust the, never would have come out. You bury the lead in reverse. I'm sorry. We're going to need that 90 minutes from now. I got some more. <laughs> I, got, I got some more, Larry. But you're 100% correct. He, you're 100% correct. He would do no research and find it tantalizing that... You're a vegetarian. <laughs> you love a dog. <laughs> Oh God! Sorry. We'll no, no. Back. You okay? <laughs> I love it. I love it so much too. It's it's just it's just delicious. Um, I have uh, I have something here resembling a dossier now, and um, I am curious about many many things. First of all, we're both October babies. Not important. What but Madison, Wisconsin. I'm at the end. Madison, Wisconsin, as a place to grow up, was great. I would like to know more, honestly. I love Madison. Uh, uh, Madison's very much like um, like Austin, Texas. It's really? A, yeah, well, it's a capital. A it's a university town. Uh, there's a lot of water. It's a perfect mixture of rednecks and lesbians. It's like where you want to raise your kids. Right. Um, I loved Madison. It's 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 an incredible town. Walk in. I, 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 I used to, I was telling my son um, this, in the summers, I would walk down, I wouldn't have to tell my parents, I would walk down, uh, I would borrow somebody's boat, I wouldn't even tell them, and that was not a problem. I would take the boat at sunset over to the uh, student union, I'd anchor the boat, I'd swim in, I would sit there as a teenager, drink beer and watch a silent movie with live piano outdoors with the original color tinting. Then I'd dive back in and I, I mean, it was like paradise. You grew up in the 20s? I grew up in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the 20s. Holy God! Uh, no, but uh, like we'd go to films, uh, you know, the film societies at the university were great. <laughs> you know, before that. But I borrowed somebody's boat without asking. Yeah, you borrow Already boats. Already I love this, because it's just moor moored, and you just grab one and say, here I go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and you know if they get upset, you know, you'll be back soon. Is that Woodford kid, or they just think one of the kids took it? No, they th uh, you know, it'll come back. I mean, what, are they going to get it out of the lake? Mm -hmm. We used to drive our cars on the frozen lake. It was amazing. We used to jump into the frozen lake. Have you ever done that? No, sir. It's... What, what, are, you, what are you looking for there, other than death? Uh... There was one night, there was no alcohol involved, there was nothing, and I had never been in the lake, and I knew it was frozen out to about uh, 30 feet, uh, and I knew the water there was about four feet deep, and I just went out and jumped in. You were by yourself? I was by myself. So... It's cold. A death wish? Uh, this, let's, let's look back over many other moments. No, no, no. It, it was just something I, I hadn't had to done. do. Sometime, yeah. How old were you when you did this? I was 16. Holy shit. Yeah. My testicles just descended. Just now? Just now. I see. Just talking about When you it. sat down. When yeah. you're talking about it. Oh, yeah. hello. Yeah. Uh, but Madison's a, a wonderful town. Were, uh, you, were we, um, and by we, I mean you, um, uh, did you, did you suffer from Hey, Look at Me disease at an early age, which a lot of actors, of course, uh, uh, pathetic need for attention. Mm. Um, I was, uh, I, I, you know, in, uh, in a certain sense, I grew up in a Quaker family, which is interesting. Now, I'll Quake, need to know more. Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of Jews in show business. I uh, think it's important to have a few Quakers. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of Catholics in show business because the bells and the smells and the, Guilt. the costumes and all, uh, all that stuff. Quakers, you know, there's no performance. You just sit there. You know what a Quaker meeting is? You sit there I do si not. silently. Um, I mean, it's a Protestant sect, but there's no, uh, nonviolence is a big thing. 
and uh, nobody, no, nobody mediating your experience with God. That's considered obnoxious. Uh, to have a priest up there or somebody telling you what you should believe. And so what you do is you sit in silence and then people stand up and quake. That was it. They talk. Uh, so it's basically kind of a kind of a group meditation. Wow. No music. Good. <laughs> um, Make it drier. So it's a little odd uh, to have an extrovert uh, yeah. gr uh, grow up in there. And... Uh, I don't know where it came from. My, my, uh, my family was weird. My mom, who's 95, who's living at my house. God bless. Yes, 95. Uh, three kids. Left her there alone, did you? Left her there alone. <laughs> She's out in front on the street. They'll take care of her. Um, where did he go? They had three kids, uh, an 11-year break, my brother, the mistake, uh -huh. and then me, right. the mistake's friend. <laughs> um, so I think I was, I, I don't know, try, I, you know, trying to say, you know, I'm here, right. I'm alive. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot Even of Even if I am an afterthought. Sure. Well, but you're not aware of that at the time. And at the time, it's just over here, over here. Yeah. I, I mean, there are a lot of situations, I, I, you know a lot of shy actors, don't you? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I guess I've become more, but there's some ways where I'm, I, I'm, I'm, very shy, um, but you wouldn't know it if you saw it. I don't know. No, I, I can appreciate that because at some point, I think, uh, f uh, for me anyways, when you uh, start to get any sort of notoriety, that's when you pull back in. That's when you, when I, when I started to realize I had a shy streak. Not that I wanted to avoid people, it was just, um, and, and not also that I, I, it was, I was embarrassed by it, which was a piece of it, but there's also the um, screaming for attention and then, oh, there's the attention. Yeah. Uh, and I think people do get, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think people who do get any sort of level of success f feel a kind of survivor guilt of all your friends who, yep. you, who you know are equally... That's a good way to put uh, it. Yeah. Uh, talented, uh, uh, yeah, it's an odd thing. And it's the old thing, you know, you spend half your, your life trying to get your name in the paper and the other half trying to get out. Yeah. Uh, so at what point during this process do you decide that uh, the theater sounds good? The theater? Yes. Uh, you know, it never, it tr in Wisconsin, it never occurred to me truly in my it, it also, it was it, it was an embarrassing thing. I never admitted it in college. Uh, Even I though it was your major. Well, I was a theater and English lit major. Right. Um, but I would never say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I really want to be an actor. You know, I really want to wear makeup for a living and get a ten. Uh, it, it was an embarrassing uh, aspiration. Wow. And in Wisconsin, unlike growing up in New York or LA, you don't know anybody who did this. No. I mean, absolutely nobody. So it wasn't until when I, at the end of college, I got into an acting school and I realized, oh, well, I guess when that's over, you know, uh, you know you'll know, you be an actor. But plays were always what I really, I just loved to do plays. I did, did just play after play after play after play after play. That's what college was for you, was about doing that. Well, no, that's what, you know, fr from the anti-smoking skit in fifth grade on. Uh, uh, anti-smoking skit in fifth grade? Yeah. Can we open that up a little? It was, uh, yeah, my dog and I. I don't know. Did, I think did I you actually write it? smoked a cigarette. Did you write? In it, which is kind of <laughs> unbelievable. Did you write the anti -smoking? Smoking is so different now. I was just back in, I, I was back in Madison recently and I had, I had played tennis and I was doing this benefit for the school thing and I saw my tennis coach there, Mr. Kelly, who used to, between singles and doubles in tournaments, take us behind the backboard and hand out cigarettes and talk about what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. That's and fantastic. in acting classes, people used to, Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't just the doctor doing the exam. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Oh, wow. I had a uh, golf uh, coach who, uh, I was so horrible, I was the sixth man on a five-man golf team. 
And I would play... Well, where did you play? Uh, in high school? Yeah, in high school. And I would play the sixth man on the other team, and then their coach, and then my coach would be the foursome I was in. And my coach, much like your own, was such a great inspiration that when we were off in the woods looking for his ball, he would just drop one out of his pocket. Here it is! Yeah, just a fantastic... Where did you grow up? In the Northern California. In the Northern California? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, now, when I hear the word Juilliard, my sphincter tightens. So does mine. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> well, for different reasons, I'm hoping. Yours from experience. Now, um... Why, do you think there's some sort of false and elevated <laughs> sort of aesthetic there? <laughs> kind of fakey and large? <laughs> they teach that or they try to wean you of that at the Juilliard? All and the instructors... Look, yeah. Uh, nobody, nobody knows how. Nobody knows how to teach acting. Okay. As it turns out, it, it turns out nobody knows how to teach it. And so what what ends up happening is you get these. It's almost like a fundamentalist Christian. Uh, you get sects. Right. You, you know, you have a complicated world full of all sorts of choices. So you go, well, it's got to be this. You know. Like, you know, there's the Mamet school. You know, you got to approach it like that. And I hope I don't upset David Mamet. Does David Mamet watch? I can't believe you're saying that. Are you saying that? Are you saying now that you're afraid that Mamet might be watching? Mamet might be watching. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Because I think, I think, first of all, he's a writer, and he's developed this kind of writer-centric yes. approach, to you know, which is, which is become an automatron. Just say the words. Just say the words. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah get out of the way. But you have these different sort of ferocious schools yeah. um, that you have to approach it externally, internally. And of course, any good actor you've ever worked with is really non-dogmatic about it, right. aren't they? Yes. And, uh, you know, combining all sorts of things. Yeah. Teaching acting, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's experience. Right. Yeah. Um, my thing with acting schools is, you know, it's like shrinks. They take too much credit. You know, just the act of going there is what's healthy, yeah. you know, and maybe 10% of it is, you know, the person sitting there silently nodding. Yeah. Um, so what you, what you can teach, you can teach people uh, to make things clear in a big theater. Right. So their voice and speech stuff is, nice. uh, you know, right. uh, is really big. They were very non-dogmatic about the acting, but if you believe that anybody, th there's, a, there's a joke, the difference between Yale actors where they were less technical back then uh, and they just let you act, which I think is a more logical thing. The difference between a Yale actor and a Juilliard actor is uh, Yale actors are really interesting but you can't understand them. And Juilliard actors, you can understand everything but you don't give a fuck. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, if you buy into this needs to be, you know, clear uh, people don't talk that way right yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I I agree with you now this is with some time and perspective at the time yes were you was I a, 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 a sucky automatron no were you an enthusiastic youngster or were you slowly subversive to your environment um I found that uh, uh, the b the best actors there were, um, you know, there's there's something wrong in uh, it, it's a little bit of a cult there. There's it, it, you have to own something when you act it, which is antithetical to uh, a school structure where you're sort of pleasing authority. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't I wasn't a difficult person, but uh, you know, I I, I I did sort of deep down, f you know, I mean, we used to make fun of that aesthetic uh, there. Who too. were some of your classmates? Uh, Wendell Pierce, you know Wendell Pierce. Certainly. Uh, Tom Gibson. Uh, those are probably the two most um, most working. Right. Um, when was you became friends and roommates with Schiff's brother? Was that in college or afterwards? 
That was uh, in New uh, York. Uh, yeah, that was in college at Wesleyan. It was in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, yeah, I knew Richard when he was, uh, you know, a dyspeptic, a punk, twenty-five year old. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't even a, an actor. He was a uh, he was trying to be a director. Holy shit! Um, and he actually got me my first audition in New York. Um, for for uh, a play at Manhattan Theater Club called Vikings. I'll say. Yes. <laughs> Didn't happen. No. But yeah, I've known Richard forever. And you're still tied with his brother? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk to him all the time. According to your dossier, you're best friends. Yes. Yeah, we are. That's awesome. We are. I'm, I'm, I'm very close to him. And, and I think I have almost a brotherly, you know, relationship with Richard. My joke about Richard was, do you know Richard? Yes. Yes. I mean, in passing. Oh, uh, okay. My joke about Richard is uh, that uh, he was doing a one-man show, and the only problem is he hates the cast. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Is that an original? No. Yeah. He, yeah. he kind of truffle hunts for the downside. Yeah. And I, I, and I mock him. For I that. love that. Truffle hunts for the downside. Yeah. Huge boulder of good. Is and, anyone writing this down? Hey, Dr. Chen, we're getting gold here. It's gold, baby. <laughs> I like that a lot. Truffle hunts for the downside. Yeah, truffle hunts for the downside. I've never met a Jew who, uh, well, wait. Um, Can I tell you a Jewish joke? My please, favorite, my please. Favorite, my favorite Jewish joke? Yes. Do you know this? The, they find out, uh, these guys in the Jewish resistance find out Hitler's going to cross the bridge at 8 o'clock. Do you know this? No. So they wire it up with explosives, and they get down under the bushes, and they got the plunger. 8 o'clock, no Hitler. 8.15, no Hitler. 8.30, no Hitler. 8.45, no Hitler. One turns to the other and goes, oh, my God, I hope he's all right. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's sweet. There's not a damn thing wrong with that. No. <laughs> other than Jews concerned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for anyone but themselves. Um, now hold it. When, sure. did you, when did you start doing the uh, uh, the crawling and the stand up and the stuff? Uh, I started stand up as a preteen, and I had no formal training as an actor. I, I came up through the stand up comedy, right? And um, uh, sort of bullshitted my way into See, auditions, and then formal training. He, I, this is, I, I had. No, a, you made your point very well about formal <laughs> training, about where you stand on it. Well, or sit I, on I, it, as it were. I, I was watching. It was uh, a huge moment for me. I'm watching Road Warrior. Okay, cool. When it first came out in the '30s, <laughs> when he was cool. Remember yeah. that? Jew loving, Jew loving, <laughs> Jew loving working actor. Um, and there's the guy with the weird green teeth who flies the yeah. helo. And he captures him, he ties him up, the guy's tied up in his car, and that fantastic little dog yes. is sitting in the car, and he's got a pistol trained on, on the green teeth guy, and there's a string coming from the trigger to the dog, and the dog's got a bone in his mouth, okay? And there's a shot of a rabbit running by, and then there's a shot of the dog looking at the rabbit. And then there's a shot of the guy going, you know, like this, and then there's a, sh a shot of the dog just releasing his concern. And I thought, perfect. The dog is a perfect actor. <laughs> yes. I mean, the dog is a perfect actor. Now, obviously, the dog can't do it eight times a week. Who gives a shit? Or the, that his performance was created in the editing bay. Right. The dog was perfect. Perfect. Uh, and I do think... You know think who would agree with that, by the way? Who? Mammoth. Maybe he would. He, Mammoth would agree that the dog did exactly the fuck what he wrote. And nothing more, and, and, and nothing, nothing less. More. That's what I hate about. That's what I loved. Uh, Alec Baldwin's uh, uh, one of the greatest lines ever, ever written, by the way, in Main Street. Car wreck. Alec Baldwin gets out and goes, "Well, that happened." <laughs> yeah, which has been used for the last twenty years. I mean, it's it's beautiful. But he writes something about Ma in in in, a, in the forward or something in, in Mammoth's last book on acting, and he said, um, "Everything in this book is absolutely riveting, and I don't agree with a word of it." Right, and that is sort of the actor's take on. You know the uh, the mammoth joke with the the bums on the street and uh, 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 this very feet person walks by and the guy goes, "You get a quarter," and the guy goes, "Neither a borrower nor a lender be William Shakespeare," and the bum goes, "Fuck your mother, <laughs> David Mammoth." <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Very nice. Touch of the poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so after the Juilliard, yes, you graduate uh, from Juilliard and yes. immediately become a waiter. I'm assuming. No, actually, my first job was well. I did. I was. I. I was. Uh, Working in oh Panarellas, yes, I did work at Panarellas. You know, uh, you, uh, you want to know who a friend of mine was there? Please. Oh, okay, this is very interesting. Guy goes to Wesley, and he's a, he's like a year ahead of me. I don't know him really well. Really smart guy. Uh huh. Uh, really good guy. And we're working at this restaurant. Um, and I hate working at restaurants. Uh, I, I, I there's nothing I care less about than other people's food. <laughs> <laughs> and how specific they want it. And how they want it. In fact, there was one thing that drove me nuts when it would get incredibly busy. Mm -hmm. And I would hear, excuse me, I need a straw. I need a straw. I need a no, nobody needs a straw. You want a straw, <laughs> right? It just used to tick me off. So one night it's really busy, really, really busy. And I hear, sir, sir, excuse me, I need a straw. I need a straw. And finally, I'm just like, I turn around, I go, look. And it's a woman in a neck brace. And I go, you need a straw. And I stopped and I got a straw. But I'm talking to this guy. <laughs> That's fantastic. This friend of mine, he comes in, he's bummed. He's had this conversation with his father. His father, who's like a doctor or a lawyer or something, is like, uh, what are you going to do? You've been out of college for a couple of years. You're a waiter. What are you, you going to do? Do you want to you know, go to law school, medical school? And he has this painful conversation with his father where he says, look, dad, you know, I'm, I'm not an actor, but I'm interested in performing. I'm not a musician, but I like drumming. I'm not a painter, but I'm interested in art. And his father's like, well, what the hell do you want to do? And he said, well, I know you, this is like the last thing anybody wants to hear, but I want to be a performance artist. <laughs> and his father was very sweet, but he was, like, upset. Uh, he's the guy who founded uh, Blue Man Group. Shut the fuck up. I can't. <laughs> Nicely Chris, done. Chris Wink, yeah. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. So... When uh, your kid says, oh, sorry, I thought that was a... Go into performance artist. Yeah. No, but I got a job pretty quickly out, out. Bill Pullman dropped out of a production of Curse of the Starving Class. Yes. But do you have it? Oh, Ka my With God. Kathy Bates. With Kathy Bates, which is great. Great job. Yeah. You get to meet Sam Shepard. It's really exciting, except I had to go in in a week, which is insane because there's this, like, big monologue. And you have to urinate on stage. I'm sorry. It sounded like you said urinate on stage. You have to urinate on stage, which is against the law, so I had to use a colostomy bag. I'll but apparently Malkovich, Malkovich in Chicago really did it. And then you have to come, the kid freaks out, and you have to walk out. I got this job, and then a, a week later, I had to walk out on stage, dripping wet, totally naked. And I did it for like nine months. <laughs> yeah, well, once you get a taste of that. Once you get a taste of walking around naked. <laughs> on stage. But it, uh, uh, so I had a brief period, and then I so was for, naked on stage. For all the actors, I've talked to a few, who had to, a few on the show, actually, who had to go on stage naked. Do, do you have the, the nightmare that the other actors have, that they're on stage naked? Once you've actually done it, does that, does that dream, does that recurring dream? Because that's, you know, it's the ultimate I'm not prepared, which is why they're picturing themselves naked, I suppose. I never had that dream. I, uh, you know, I had a nightmare that, about this particular thing, because I, I, I had to pick up a, a lamb, a live lamb, Meryl Sheep, I called her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My nightmare was that, well, I had a couple of nightmares, but, you know, what it was, you know, if you have an erection, obviously you will be known as the guy who had the erection <laughs> picking up the lamb. Uh -huh. Is that a possibility when you're naked on stage? That uh, an erection could, could occur? Not really, yeah. but you do want to hit that kind of middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is there might be a little fluffing going on before you take the stage. You you, well, well, it was a cold theater, you, you know. I, it should be a cold theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the fluffing. Somewhere between nothing and half staff, right? Yeah. Somewhere in the low end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just respectable. <laughs> you want your dignity when you're out there naked. It's so perfect that we lamp. had Jason Alexander, the king of shrinkage, here last Sunday. <laughs> and now we have the halfway house. Oh, he's got an incredible Don't act like small. you know he's Seinfeld all references. <laughs> Are you serious? He's all dick. <laughs> don't act like you know Seinfeld references. I only know him from you. No, don't act like you I do. wasn't allowed to watch. Um, 
Well, that's pretty fantastic. All right, so this is your off-Broadway debut. But as it turns out, according to your dossier, sir, your Broadway debut is a little thing, a they little thing call that you're familiar with. A few good Jews, men. A few good Jews. Uh, yes, and you replaced. Uh, I originally went in as. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, what's his face? The Kevin Bacon part. Yeah. Um, the prosecutor. Jack something. Yeah. It and is Jack something. That's correct, sir. Sorry. That's have, right. Jack we'll something. Jack I have something. Halfheimer's. <laughs> um, and then I replaced Busfield. Right. Uh, who had taken over for Hulse. Hulse. And then, um, I think they thought it was going to die. So I got it. And then it ran a little longer. So I got to do it for a long time. It was really fun. Yeah, it went at least 500 shows, I think. Yeah, I did it for like nine months or something, was, was the whole thing. Nine uh, months of Kathy? Uh, no, six months of Kathy, which was fun. Please tell me did how you, much fun did, that was. Did you see I the... saw the play, but um, I was not ever in the play. You were, ne you were never in the play. So... I've got to hear a little bit of how much fun Six Months of Caffey was. It was really, it was really, really fun. Well, the when, uh, you know, it's interesting because that I felt like in the movie um, th that the, that the play was written much more as uh, uh, the, the it became a more heroic story in the film mm -hmm. for, for Kathy. Certainly. And in the play, uh, there was a lot more sort of, you know, smart-ass stuff. Right. Um, That's why I'm thinking a little bit more fun to play, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, there was nothing, nothing, uh, you was know. Was Lang still? La no, Lang had, Lang had just left. He was great. Oh, my God. He was great. Yeah. Um, uh, we looked like a lizard up there, man. <laughs> and Michael Countryman, did you know him, was playing Sam. Mm -hmm. um, Who was Jessup at this point when you were doing it? Uh, the Beast. Oh, Perlman. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be happy about that. He's got to be happy about that. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I mean that with love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that with no, love. No, of course. No, I loved Ron. Big dude, man. With the cigars and that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but this we, had, we had a great, uh, you want to hear a story? Please. From, uh, we're doing, uh, uh, the way it was staged, and the, the second act is the trial. And so what you would have is, well, first of all, um, speaking of screwing around on stage, my first time. This is your and Broadway. And Molina, Molina probably had something to do with this, by the way, because he was there. Uh-huh. My first night on broad on Broadway, uh, I'm playing the prosecutor. I sit down. You, it's like jumping on a train. You know, you get like two. You you work on it, and then you get like a put in, and then you got to like jump on this train, and you're terrified. Uh, it had I'm, been going on at that point. It had been going on, and and everybody's you know into it. But you're you know playing this new thing. What if you you know what if you screw up? I sit down, I open up my briefcase, it is just plastered with just the most atrocious pornography. Gay porn, I'm hoping. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, yes. And you think Melina might have something to do with it? I think he might have. I think he might have. But one night, I'm doing it with Busfield, and uh, Hodge, Mike Hodge, uh, was playing the judge. Mike's a, a, a big black man, uh, bald guy, uh, really good actor. And uh, we would do the court stuff, and then there'd be these little breaks, you'd go off stage, and he would always have this uh, roll of toilet paper that he'd you know, take the sweat off with, you know, and he's playing the judge up there. Uh, and so we go back on. I don't and, feel good about where this no, is going. No, 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 and Busfield, <laughs> Busfield goes, Your Honor, and we're facing, he's facing away from the audience. I'm going, God, what the, you know, what the hell is going on? Finally, my thing comes out. I Jack, I turn around, and he's, uh, this large, bald black man is, with total dignity, looking down, wondering why the other actors are laughing. 
He's with, the mummy at this point. With <laughs> a like a foot long flap of white toilet paper <laughs> flopping in the air conditioner. <laughs> and he never realized it till the end. I mean, at the end they sentenced the guys, you know, they're supposed to be crying. <laughs> and, you would go and, up and, and the guys are like, you know, and then at the end he bangs the gavel and walks and the audience is laughing at no idea. Oh my god. Yeah. That was a fun night. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you meet Melina in this production. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I'm, uh... How do you know Melina? Um, probably because... The cabal, he, is, is it? Yeah, yeah, there's a Jew thing. Uh-huh. No, it was on the set of the motion picture. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, he was getting Aaron some cappuccino, and, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he seemed delightful. Oh, delightful. Yeah. Delightful. So we, uh... So he didn't e express any of his darker... Oh, immediately. In oh, what yeah, way? Yeah. Um, just, it, was, it started with self-loathing, and then it became um, world-loathing, and then back to self-loathing. Right. Yeah. N victimization yeah. and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of lovely, how about that? Uh, these things... Are you watching yourself? These uh, get smoother and smoother, these transitions. We have a live audience. Well, not only does he watch himself, he will only drink out of his Kevin Pollack Chat Show coffee mug every day, and we have to have his movies running on a continuous loop throughout the house. Let's... Okay, the second part was made up, <laughs> but he does do the coffee <laughs> mug. Done. Nicely done, hon. It's in, the, it's in the play. It's in the act. That's terrible. I know, right? <laughs> well, it's only seven He's... there. Second it's only seven different screens. <laughs> uh, Claire, this, uh, are you like bringing Josh Molina in? I'm going to, but first, Claire Hanscom. You're kidding, he's not working? <laughs> Zing. Zing. Wow. I, I guess we have to go right to the Molina then. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's probably it's in between hands. I wasn't going to pull this, but apparently we have to go right to the Molina. I have him on speed dial because he's my other boy. No, I, I wrote it down so he wouldn't forget. <laughs> but I put on the, the glasses, of course, and I... <laughs> Good. I know it's here somewhere because I... Oh, boy, it's oh, hard to be funny here when you sleep with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Hi. <laughs> Mama. That's ask, tough. Ask Bradley. There it is. Uh, all right. Here we go. This is from Twitter. Josh, at Josh Molina tweets, ah, wow. can you ask him, in this case that would be you. This would be, either be about hair, career, Whether he divorce. even knew there were five places before he started seeing the ratings for the good guys. Five. I see. I see what he's done. <laughs> I, there were <laughs> five places. I guess the that's one awkwardly phrased. Yeah, really. Well, I think, I think I, even his zinging is as bad as his acting. <laughs> what a horrible! If you're going to take a shot, yeah, do the prep work. Do the prep work. <laughs> Use At the least. language as the king intended it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would be your first suggestion. So what Josh is trying to say mm -hmm. is, did I know yes. that the ratings uh, for the show are bad? I, I, I assume that's where the shot. Uh, by the way, what's the show he's on? Exactly. My show? No, he's on In Plain Sight, I think, now. No? Was that just a... a John, that's another charity shot from an ex-West uh, Wing person. I see. Yeah. That's not work. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a parlor game now. He's watching. You know he's no, watching. No, I love Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure Josh has all the time in the world. <laughs> And the hits just keep on coming. Um, uh, I actually love Josh a lot and wanted to make sure that uh, he came down to, uh, to do one of our uh, low-rated shows. You shoot that in the Texas? Yes. What part of the Texas? The Houston? No, the Dallas. The Dallas? Yes. Hmm. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I wanted him to come. Mm -hmm. To Dallas, <laughs> just to share the love. Just to share the love. Uh, but he was great. I was. I, I had a lot of stuff. You know about his, the dirty stuff he does. Sure. Uh, you know he would. I don't know all the details that you do. 
He has no sense of proportion. He, uh, uh, you know, he does stupid things like there's mayonnaise and Vaseline on your car door. Uh, everybody's iPod is set to Mandarin. Uh, many books that I was reading on the set of West Wing, he would uh, tear out the last four pages. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. Though. Yeah. Um, at w that happened in Washington when we were shooting, and I like burst into his hotel room where he's got two computers going, one gambling and the other doing the other thing that guys do with computers at mm -hmm. three in the morning. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Horrible sight, um, but Josh is Josh is perverse and uh, and very funny and likes the torture. Enjoys he likes the, the torture. pain of others. He will yes, he enjoys the pain of others and has no sense of proportion. I mean, you know, you'll use a hand buzzer on him so he will pick up your child from school. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's, yeah, you know, he would get the director's car from West Wing and uh, get the keys from the Teamsters and fill it with computers from the set, and then you'd wrap at three in the morning and he'd call security. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. St uh, s stuff like that. I don't think most people knew about this, myself included. Yeah. No. The, to he, the depths that he would uh, yeah. venture. Oh, he'll 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 go to depths. Uh -huh. And so it was funny the first seven times. Y yeah, um, and then the hundred that followed, not so much. Now it's just an expression of his lack of work. Mm -hmm. I think is that all the creativity goes into uh, you know these baroque. What you're doing is you found a theme that will cut him the deepest. Oh no no no! There's many. There's many themes. But the theme of the work, the struggle for the work, oh, it seems oh, to be the one you're enjoying the most at present. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because I'll notice uh, on the Twitter and in life, he'll, he'll take the piss out of himself as much as he possibly can on the struggling for work, and right. I know you don't recognize me, but. But right. it, shouldn't, it shouldn't really compete with how deep the wound needs to go. In the no, hand, in the hands it does, of it like does need to go. And it was great to have him on our show, because I just, you know, to know that his kids finally have dental mm -hmm. just meant a lot to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I uh, know that he's watching. I, I, I know he's watching, and I know that, uh, you know, he probably shut down the 110. <laughs> <laughs> he used to, he, used, I, I, he didn't do it to me, but he's had actors, he's pretended to be assistants and gotten actors to go to auditions that don't exist. No, he hasn't. Yes, he has. <laughs> he has. He has. Oh my God! So I should. We should feel lucky that we haven't been tortured by this maniac, or just not loved. Clearly, just not loved. Well, and he would. He admits to this. He would. He just doesn't know when to stop. He would. He'll mock you bef before you're doing a take. Allison Janney, dear friend of his, loves him. Right. He'd make her cry, you know, and we'd have to stop. He'd make her cry, you know, and you go, Josh, 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 da, 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 da. And he would just like go right, you know, right to the, um, you know, whatever the insecurity was. It's just, it's perverse. It's mm. an odd, um, it's, it's an odd quality. Yeah. Um, let me take another question from your, uh, from your viewers. Your Claire Hanscom from, uh, from your Facebook says, you said you read a book a week. You must have said that somewhere. Mm. What's the best book you've read this year? Freedom. Freedom? Do you read fiction? Yes, freedom's fiction. Do you have a favorite genre or author? If you read a book every year, how could you have a favorite? Favorites. Uh, I used to read mostly um, uh, like what I call political porn, like a lot of nonfiction uh, stuff that would. I was so used to being outraged, I found it relaxing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I've been. Um, I, I I don't know. I like biographies. I loved Freedom, the Jonathan Franzen book. Uh, Why? 
Uh, wow. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of it is set in in the Midwest, and it's sort of capture. It's in Minneapolis, but it captures the sort of flavor of that, and it just resonates with in a kind of uh, blue velvet wow. David Lynch mm. way mm. with what goes on, um, uh, the relationships, the difficulties that people get into that they you know can't even talk about. Um, and it's also a, a, a long view of a family, which, uh, you know, every great play is about that. Yeah. Um, uh, and he's just an amazing writer. I had never read The Corrections, so. A book a week? Yeah, uh, he, uh, that's probably an exaggeration. That's an aspiration. Kindle? You know what's, I, 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 the iPad. Uh, the, I, I, I'm telling you, the I, I, the Kindle was awkward. I'm brand new to the iPad, and I see the e-books as an app, and I see the Kindle as an app. I got them both. I like the bookshelf of the e-book, but I uh, and I, I remember seeing the original ads on TV for the uh, for the uh, Kindle? iPad, and the person's just doing this, and you see yeah. the page go over. Tries but on the Kindle app, you touch the bottom thing, and the thing switches. I don't see the, how, how do you get the page to do? I don't want this, I want to stay, I need that in my reading. You need, you need that? The, the page flowing over. Is that the ebook or is that, you can make it happen in the Kindle? You can do it in the Kindle. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe you just got to work in your, you got to work on the work rest. Work in your motion. But the thing on the uh, iBook yeah. is that you can, you can highlight really easily. Right. You don't need a light. Um, uh, it's really good. The Keith Richards autobiography is really good. Oh, I gotta get that. It's really good. I've gotta get that. It's really good. Sammy, would you mind making a note at some point? In Keith your, in your phone, at least, because I'll forget. I right. really, really, really want to get that. You're the third person who said this, and now I'm dying. My head's exploding. No, it's really funny. He's very, very uh, articulate. I had heard a rumor that he didn't remember anything, but he clearly does. Or he made it all, all of it up. No, he's not making it up. Yeah, it can't be. It's not making it. How many blood transfusions? I don't know. It's hard to remember now. Six? I haven't gotten to that part. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a fun thing on, on the show here, believe it or not. I'll be the judge. Because it's been painful up till now. You will ultimately be the judge. And it's a this or that, Coke or Pepsi type questions. A series of five of them that we call <coughs> the Tweet Five. Dave Keckner. Tweet Five! Tweet Five! Have you met the Dave Keckner? Have you worked with the, no, with the maniac? No, but Melina was up for that. <laughs> You're not wrong. He came in and read for it. We said, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Why are you going with this? Yeah. Little, yeah. It's not Krishna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this one is written directly to you. Oh, God. Yep. From at Kitsania, or Kitsarina. Acting or writing? Uh, writing. Revenge of the Nerds 2 or Billy Madison? Never seen Billy Madison. Stage or film? Stage. Real politics or fake politics? Uh, fake. Josh Lyman, Josh Molina. Are you kidding? All correct uh, answers. Okay, good. Those are all correct. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding was in fact the correct answer. Yeah. Um, tell me about, if you would please, um, it, it, I'm sure you were asked ad nauseum, but it's been a, uh, maybe enough time now. Well, first, I need to know about your tales of the dark side, clearly. The deal. The episode, the deal, that you, uh, that you did. Jesus. Uh, Buddy, we put together a dossier. We don't fuck around. You didn't see it, though, did you? Of course. God, I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't even, no, I don't you even... can't. No, you can't. No, I can't. Yeah. In fact, the balls that you sit it's... on for giving shit to Molina... You need to see the tales of the dark side. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I just remember, oh, I have a job. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, a thrill. That's, that's the beauty of those moments in time. You can easily pinpoint the moment in a job like that, and, and regardless of any ball busting that happens, you go right back to that moment of, really? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I love those moments, by the way. I really do. Um, so... When your agent says there's a script, 
Oh, no, maybe uh, Aaron called you on the phone. The West Wing. Well, how did it come about? Um, the, uh, I, it's, it's, it's actually it's kind of a funny story. Um, he had told me about it. Right. Um, when he did American President, he turned in some, like, 400-page thing. Um, and... Uh, wasn't really looking to do TV, and then Wells, the way he tells it, Wells uh, asked him out to lunch, and he said, "Have you ever thought we thought he should go out with Wells, uh, John Wells?" And John said, "Do you ever think about anything for TV?" And Aaron was like, uh, "White House," <laughs> you know, because he had all these things. He had told me uh, about this, and he told me to look at this part, and uh, I. Uh, I was obsessed. Uh, I had always been interested in politics. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with the arena. Um, uh, I made sure um, that it was going to be one of the best auditions I ever had. I mean, I remember walking around, but you know, getting completely off book with it. Because one thing I knew about Aaron is is I think acting, it's, it, the process of acting to me is like recovering from a stroke. I mean, you go to the read-through and you read it and everything's fine. And then as you start to memorize it, you're like walking like a llama and you can't even be a human being. Right. Uh, and if you get caught in that sort of half-memorized effort, you, uh, you stink. Uh, so, I mean, so I got you know, completely off. I was even walking through the canyons uh, doing the audition as if it was a day where I just was a bad actor, trying to still make it work. I mean, I was trying every sort of my thing. Went in, had a great audition, but then, uh, you know, and Aaron called me, great, 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 it's all gonna be great. But he didn't have a lot of power in TV then. Uh, and uh, Tommy Schlamy had reservations. Right. Uh, Warner Brothers had reservations. NBC had reservations. Because um, they wanted uh, different, what? Do you think? Yeah, you know. They don't uh, even know. Uh, nobody knows. No. I mean, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I eventually uh, I went back in. I had to read with Maura Kelly, who was who was in it in the first year, and it was sort of presented to me that um, that it was kind of her audition and that. You know, they wanted me for Josh, and they just want to see, you know, so I remember feeling very relaxed and just sort of turning my back to the cameras. Um, and the response after that was, she blew you off the screen, you're not funny, you're not sexy, you're not going to get this part. And they said, you're not going to get this part. Um, and I was climbing the walls. Um, and You just knew you were perfect for it. I thought, I, yeah. yeah and I mean, there's a sense of that. You just feel it. You know something. Uh, uh, yeah, but you also feel like a crazy person, like a sane person in an insane asylum because everybody's heard you say that 20 times. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know you think this would be great. You know? Uh, and you're going like, no, this really would be great. And then I was right near here. I get a call that um, I'm in the show. Uh, and I was at a gas station right near here in Santa Monica, and I was in the show, but I was playing Sam, the Rob Lowe part. Mm -hmm. And I was in no position to pick or choose, but I called Aaron, who had been very supportive through this whole thing, and I said, this is the one time in my life I'm going to make this phone call, because, you know, thank you, uh, but... This whole process has distorted the fact that you thought I was right for Josh. Yeah. Um, and I understand how that happens, but uh, I want to be the guy who takes down the Christian right, not the guy who's, you know, with the hooker. And he's like, uh, you know, in a series as it goes on, you, you know, you bend the writing to it. And I said, still. And then the next day I found out uh, that I was Josh. Um, so it was... Because they figured they could get sexy, funny. Right. Right. 
They could get sexy fun. Uh, yeah. From Rob Lowe. Right, right, right. And also, I mean, the casting, casting is just, uh, it's the death of joy. I mean, it's like, it's like watching Molina act. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to have ended the show on that. <laughs> <laughs> That should have been our out. <laughs> that should have been our button. Uh, uh, I'll, I, listen, I'll tell you really Please. Fun, I, I, if if no, you're no, interested no. in this. I am. Now, Tommy, dear friend of mine, Tommy Shlami, right? And initially, he's skeptical. He and I end up becoming best friends. We do uh, one of his favorite episodes. was one of my favorite episodes. Our families hang out. Uh, we, uh, we're, uh, he's an incredible confidant. Mm. Um, He's the director. For those of you watching and listening, uh, he was yeah one of the he, one of the executive producers and a big director on. And um, uh, West Wing is ending. Aaron is gone. It's three years later, and he's about to do Studio sixty. And everybody's saying this you know the script is great. The script is great. I. I need to shake my etch a sketch after seven years. Uh, you know I need to not act. Um, and I'm not. E I don't need. I don't even want to read it, because I don't want to be. And I certainly don't want to ask anything of of Aaron, because you know you have friends who are in that position, and they're always getting peppered by people who want auditions. Uh, also, you'd already made your call. Uh, you'd already made your phone call, and you said this is the only time I will ever. Right, 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 right. And uh, finally, he calls me. I was working on the West Wing at the very end. He calls and he says, "Have you read the script?" I said, "No." He said, "Will you please read it? Because I really think you're right for this guy." I wow. keep, uh, you know. Uh, and so I go home, and I read it, and it's like, oh, you know, so good. It was so good, and, um, you know, you begin to wonder, uh, you know, why. Well, I, 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 you know, I felt like on West Wing, I got better writing in a year than Meryl Streep gets. Right. Uh, you know, and there's a peculiar thing that can happen in TV when you have really good writing that is a, a, a and I'm thinking, and I have a talk with my family about it, and this is a difficult decision, but, uh, oh my God, yes. It's just so good. Uh, uh, you know, it's just such a rich acting experience. So I call my manager the next day, and I said, tell him yes. My manager gets a call from Tommy Schlani. You have to come in and audition. <laughs> what? Audition? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 and I was no. like, yeah, I'll audition in a pilgrim's outfit. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in the gag reel. No, he wanted me to read like with somebody else, but, right. I, but it was like, oh, God. It just never ends. You and Matt Perry, the chemistry. Um, must you worked have, with Matt. Yes, but it must have been instant. Oh, I love Matt. Yeah. Well, just... Stole. Uh, hilariously funny. Yeah, he's... I steal so much of his material. Well, yeah. I've worked with, uh, historically, some of the funniest people uh, known to man, and yet uh, I still insist that working with Matt... Uh, Oh yeah, it was just unparalleled. Laugh. Also, just the 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 lines that he's throwing at me. Do that. Try this. And I know that it came from so many years on Friends, where every week they play the game, beat the joke, all through rehearsal. Beat the joke. Right. Beat the joke. But he's the just joke. funny. Too. But he's developed from that a savant level of beat the joke. Yeah. That's that's what his brain does. He loves games, of course we know. But it's that's the game that he's right. so amazing. You heard his baseball. Uh, I'm the one who told it to The him. three and two. I'm actually the one who told it to him. Is that true? It is true. <laughs> and it actually... I love that he stole that. Yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know his pickup line, okay? I don't want to bore you with the details of my rape trial. <laughs> <laughs> For which I pleaded no low contender. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. You taught him the baseball. That baseball well, thing is funny. Yeah, and I, and I will make it quite clear that the bit that I taught him belongs actually to uh, Jim Edwards. Who was the, uh, the, the? He actually the, said it wasn't his. The author, yeah, no, he's quick to point it out. In fact, when, <laughs> yeah, when he finally hosted the ESPYS, Matt did. He yes. said, "Do you think your friend would let me do the baseball bit?" And I said, "Gosh, really? 
okay, I'll ask him. And then we arranged it to have Jim Edwards in the audience to sort of do a tip of the hat after he did the bit. He said, I wanted to thank the guy who wrote this, and it worked out great. But yeah, it's, uh, it was, uh, it's really it was one of his favorite things in life at one point. I, uh, I, I'm working with Colin Hanks, and, and who's a big baseball fan, oh, yeah. a big Giants fan. Yes, indeed. And I said, um, uh, yeah. you have to hear this. And I called Matt, uh, and Matt said, uh, you got to give me 15 minutes. i got to rehearse it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is so Matt. That, <laughs> oh, my God. That's fantastic. That he did it. Yeah, yeah give me 15 minutes. i got to rehearse it. i got to rehearse it. He's, like, sitting at home. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, uh, had you, you knew Schiff, of course, because you were roommates and best friends with his brother. But what, what is the sense around the first table read? What is the sense around the beginning parts of this as the Alice and Janney and, and, and uh, other, other aspects? Well, nobody, nobody had a lot of confidence. Everybody thought it was good, but nobody had a lot of confidence that it was going to... Well, going back in time, if, if I may help set the stage, political efforts in the network television world were a hundred percent failure up until that point. They had never worked. Various shows had been attempted. Uh, Patty Duke was the president or something. There, there have been so many shows. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I, and that's one thing that just drives me absolutely batshit about, uh, you know, about Hollywood. Uh, you absolutely. Know, uh, you know, that, the, you know, it was like until, it's never Kevin, worked, so until Kevin Costner did those movies. It turns out, no, baseball movies can work. Bad ones don't. Right. Or not even bad. Ones that don't work, don't. But <laughs> right. it's not the genre. Right. It's not the genre thing. People tell me about Studio 60. It's too inside baseball. Really? More than CSI? <laughs> right. I mean, who knows, uh, you know, people who investigate deaths. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> All right. Um, now there are 17 versions. Right, right. Um, if it works, it works. Right. Uh, I, 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 I. So the confidence level you were saying Here's was the, low. I, 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 the confidence level was low. There's a misconception about Aaron, which is that um, you know he really uh, you know wants to you know feed you a plate of civic vegetables. Hmm. And the truth is, he is in uh, a very satisfying way, a, a, a completely impatient traditional showman. He wants it to be funny, you know, he wants your ears to, uh, you know, to bleed, he wants you to laugh, he wants his character to be great. If, if, if an earnest version of that material right. came out, I right. mean, basically, it's C-SPAN. Right. Uh, and with Aaron, you, got, you know, you get humor, you get a workplace thing, you get a kind of backstage oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, um, thing. I mean, th there was... The ultimate fly in the wall. Right, right. And it, which, as he used to say, is, you know, uh, for thousands of years has been a pretty interesting thing to people. What's it like behind the presentation? Yeah. Um, uh, but nobody had a sense that, um, and I actually think it was good for the show, having been on both sides of this. I think it is very good. People talk about television shows with a possessive. That, that is, you know, The Sopranos is, you know, is, one, is one of my shows. People don't talk about movies like that or, right. or comedians, sorry. No, no, you're right. Um, uh, and people want to, I think sometimes there's a backlash if there's like, this is going to be the greatest show, you know, then people, you know, kind of go back on their heels. West Wing, they were allowed to, you know, kind of Scumber. find it. By the way, the reviews for West Wing early on were not great. Really? No, 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 no. No. Wow. I, I mean, know. some of them, some, uh, 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 you know, I sure. remember the New York Times was like, oh, God, you know, it's like, call Aaron, don't kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then, uh, and also a show, t tr nobody knows Nobody knows what they're doing. And to find a show uh, and where a show is really going to live and where the engine of it, it, it takes time. Absolutely. I mean, nobody sits there with an entire, uh, entire show in their mind. 
uh, it's absurd not to let shows. The sad thing now, absolutely no way does West Wing get picked up now. I mean, it's just financially the model just right. just doesn't work. Which uh, you know, which I think is too bad. Yeah, it's really too bad. I mean, the spectacle is still possible in terms of scope. But now you you know it'd be on HBO and yes. you know yes. CJ would be you know blowing Josh. I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying. That was awful. Because it's true. Just terrible. Terrible. Um, let's go to the phones. The phones. I don't want to keep them out of this. They're, they're too rabid. You know you, you you can make fun. This tweet five comes you from at Earlsey Earlsey. R L Z E E Earl Z. Burt Reynolds stash or Tom Selleck stash? Boy, you can't get tired of that, can you? <laughs> he's he's going for a flavor test. Mm. He's just gonna do this so you move on to the next question. No, you know what I realized you could do with a stash? Is there stuff in here? What? You can actually talk for a while <laughs> and then Yes. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, you can ring it out. You can save a bourbon in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, isn't Reynolds kind of an oddly yeah, a little more thin and yeah. I think he was kind of a John Clark Waters Gable. look. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna go sell it. Yeah. The sell. block. The block. <laughs> Bustin' punks or buxom babes? Why choose? <laughs> Brando or De Niro? Well, again, why choose? <laughs> Josh Molina, evil genius or simply pain in the ass? That's a tough one. Evil genius. Isn't that right? That's the high end. Unemployed low road. evil genius. <laughs> That's the high end, the low road <laughs> that I was hoping for <laughs> that you would take. Omar or McNulty? Uh, boy, I huh? love that show. Uh -huh. I mean, I, 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 I really, Ridiculous. that show is unbelievable. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's unbelievable yeah. how great that show. Uh, I can't choose, uh, I don't know, Omar. They well, should all he, be. Was he one of the non-actors? I know some of the people started as non-actors that were chosen, that they were so freaking real, and actors don't want to hear this. What I, I don't, don't think Omar was one. I don't understand the across the board brilliance of the acting in that show. I mean, because you can, t I, I, you can tell when you go to a play, it's so funny to me, <laughs> generally, if you go to a play on Broadway or you go to a seventh grade play, the ratio remains the same. Two people were good, one was ridiculously good, a bunch of people were okay, four people sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the whole spectrum. Uh, you know, whether it's like a high school play or like the biggest show on, <laughs> on Broadway. But you do have moments where you see everybody's great, and that means something was going on with the director. And uh, on that show, just across the board. Well, fans, if I may, of the West Wing would say the same thing. And do you ever feel that when you're doing it, or you just can't listen to the street? Because they are all saying it. No, I... I, I, I fans. Fuck critics, fans. Uh, no, I, no, I think everybody's in a... Because what happened was, to be uh, honest with you, there was a, a, a thing where not just you having spoken Sorkin's words before, but everyone found the rhythm and the chi. And then it was just throw it away, throw it away, throw it away, from beginning to end, just throw it away. Right. And holy fuck, I mean, it really was beyond the well-oiled machine for uh, written word, for performance, for directing, for cinematography, everything. Well, I think one of the big, big uh, things about that cast is everybody was a theater actor. Oh, really? And if you take somebody who's as talented as Alice and Janney and, you know, it's like, uh, uh, what's his name, book, The Outliers with the 10,000 mm -hmm. Hours. Well, I'm talking Gladwell. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, 
you know, if you put Alice and Janney on stage every night for 10 years and you take this incredibly gifted person, then, uh, you know, it was a great, it was a, it was a great, um, you know, it was a great group. And so you it's were more 10,000 hour, 10, hours than lightning in a bottle. Yeah, I mean, I think casting is, is alchemy, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that that was a, that was a big element in that. Uh, this tweet five comes to you from Gwright o three one three. T five. Again, they're all T5. focusing on the stash. People T5. are loving the stash, and then we're going to talk about that next. For your stash, shampoo or soap? Be honest. Toothpaste. I see. <laughs> Christine O'Donnell or Sarah Palin? There's a lovely choice. Not exactly a Sophie's choice for you. Uh, as politicians or as you choose. Don't be gentle. Um, uh, I'd rather duck my head in the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now to take this, now to take the edge off. Liquor, yes. liquor or beer? Uh, they're not mutually exclusive. Why, why would they be? Why would they be? And do you follow the um, uh, beer before liquor? Never been sicker. Do you follow liquor this? Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. No. It's bogus. Beer wow. before no. liquor, never, never been, sicker. Never been sicker. And liquor before beer, you're in the clear. No, no. Yeah, no, it's it's bold. It's debunked. So walk it off with beer is what they're saying. Have all your booze and then walk it off with a it beer. It doesn't matter which order you do it. You're going to have a hangover either way. The, the trick is you've got to stick with one type of alcohol all night. Either. But aren't you... Sp only uh, beer, uh, or only vodka, or only tequila, or only wine. That's how you avoid the horrible sickness. So weird in Wisconsin, everybody drinks schnapps, you know, which is like minty cough medicine in beer. <laughs> I yeah. will say, for me, the, uh, the hot cocoa in the schnapps, Jesus, good God. You like that? Oh, God. <laughs> That's crazy delicious. Make it feel cozy? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel a warm fire. Uh, will Bailey or Detective Hodges? Uh... Anybody but Bailey. <laughs> baseball or football? Baseball, come on. Because? Oh, I love baseball. Um, Your team being? See, I get into this. Okay. All right. Okay, you ready? Sure. My, uh, we lived in Wisconsin, and then we moved to Philadelphia for a little while. Then we moved back to Wisconsin. When my brother, who's a couple of years older than me, uh, came into consciousness in 64, baseball consciousness in 64 when the Phillies just had to win one out of like 12 games. Gene Mock was the manager uh, and they lost them all. And he was forever traumatized and a passionate, passionate fan. You mentioned Seinfeld before. My, I, 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 my brother looks down on me. I'm basically a Mets fan because... Sorry, I'm sorry. It was just the way you said it. You, so it was a it, delivery. There was, there was a sense I, a of hubris. Clown? <laughs> it was a delivery, not the choice of team. Um, it was the delivery, not the choice of team. Um, because I was, uh, I was in New York uh, when they won. And he did I, go by way of Saskatchewan to get to. I'm um, a Mets fan. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. That's true. Sorry. Uh, but what I say to my brother, who's just an obsessive Phillies fan, is how is being any team's fan? any different from saying, my country, right or wrong. Right. You're, you're worshiping laundry. Mm -hmm. You know, and they sell each other and everything. Yeah. So, I, uh, I stand astride the abysses. As it were. As it were. Uh, and they're teams that when they deserve my admiration, right. I give it to them. Mm -hmm. When they earn it? Mm -hmm. All right. It's generally the guy who wins. <laughs> a true fan. <clears throat> um, let's talk about the stash. I have not been able to do, uh, uh, while for some reason doing stand-up comedy all these years, I don't like performing on stage with uh, facial hair because doing uh, celebrity impersonations has always been the staple of the act. And I don't, for some reason, think I need a clean palette before I launch into other people's faces. So the few times in film I've been able to grow something, it's been just fantastic. 
you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, but it's never been this as, beautiful thing you got going. As manly as that. No, nor will it ever be as manly as that. Um, that's a couch. What you have going there is a piece of furniture. Yes. So I want to know what it's like to live with, and I want to know... Um, well, I think people have very weird reactions to mustaches. Uh, you know, Harry Reams, Stalin. I mean, there's a uh, Hitler, for God's sake. Again, you've, you've, you've chosen well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ruined, uh, ruined the thing. I find that female reaction is a, is a mixture of uh, judgmental derision and interest. It's like, you could fix him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's like an easy fix and it's creepy. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, I'll drop the kids off at school and people will go, that's for a part, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's... Wow! Like, yeah. Um, well, you have drifted towards uh, faces that exist on wanted posters, for sure. Yeah. That has yeah. happened. There are more faces on those posters with this particular uh, look uh, than with that. Yeah, that's true. I'm, uh, you know, I may have time to shave it off, and I may do that. I'd like to, you know, lick my lip. What? As it were. Uh, the name of your second book, I think. Yes. Uh, the first one was Collected Suicide Notes, Volume 1. Mm -hmm. Do you have a fascination like that out there, floating? With? Other than reading? S suicide? Mm, you name it. <laughs> no, I have no interest in suicide. No, no, a fascination with something floating out there other than reading. Like, what do you, what well, do you mean? Well, they would be called hobbies, but that's such a boring um, category, heading. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very interested in writing. Uh, I got to write a little bit on the West Wing. Yeah, uh, let's talk about that, please. Uh, I mean, you're a stand-up, so you get, to, you, know, you get to write. But I've been a member of the Writers Guild since 87, and I find writing story fiction to be one of the great vacations from life that I've ever experienced. Writing uh, prose fiction? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. It's one of the all-time great vacations. Wow. Because I, I, I have to go away when I... When and I, you're so drunk when you're writing. <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> no, uh, really, I didn't know so that. So I find that to be nirvana. Oh, that's great. For you? So it's either I have found the hellish of facing the thing or can't wait to get there. Leave me alone. I'm going up to write. You have found that as in, opposed in to... I have found one or the other. What is it Yeah, yeah, you? yeah. Listen, uh, uh, I'll tell you something very, uh, very funny about uh, Sorkin, which I realized is absolutely true in Hollywood. There's something about writing where even the people who love to do it, uh, they'll do anything to avoid it. You call any producer, agent, uh, uh, anybody in Hollywood, and you'll get a machine, or they'll say, call back. You call any writer, Sorkin, he's writing two series. You call him, he goes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. Any writer's like, hello. <laughs> you know, no matter how busy they are, because they want, uh, you know, because it's scary. <laughs> It's very funny. I just funny. pictured them walking through uh, any place, a grocery store or a Starbucks, and several phones going off, and then a writer will say, oh, that's for me. That's for me. Yeah, just answering yeah. other people's Yeah, I'll phones. take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you find that for yourself? Once you get in, are you I, lost, I, or you're I, looking I for diversion? I find having, having performed... Uh, having done certain things like going into Broadway plays, walking around, you know, naked on a stage, doing things that are some people's literal nightmares. So I've done some things that make people nervous, not dangerous things, but, right. uh, you know, things that really creep people out. Uh, I find the, uh, the mind fuck of writing to be uh, peculiar and, uh, and profound. And, you know, the, you, need a, you need a deadline. Uh, you do, I do, I do. I, I, you know, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get past. I, you know, there's something I, I, again that I disrespect about being an actor because you're pain. You know, oh, uh, you you want to grow up and maybe try being a painter. Um, Not sure that it's a uh, job. Writing, acting. 
No, it's, uh, I, 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 uh, yeah, you know. And or a noble profession. Well, you're a we pawn. You're, you're, somebody has to write it. Yeah. Somebody has to direct it. But you're a pawn in a story, uh, no matter how great that can be. And God, it's fun. And God, I love to do it. Um, but that's what brought me back to stand-up comedy, was that I couldn't wait to not collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, maybe that's what I, I love I about envy, the writing. I envy stand-ups. I envy, uh, uh, I also envy the units that like, you know, you sit down, you write a joke or you write an evening, an evening of stuff. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're doing, uh, you know, if you're acting, if you're directing a movie, my God, that's a three year, you know, maybe it doesn't work. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, I read in its entirety the, uh, the commencement speech. Mm -hmm. How long, for example, did you work on that? It's impressive as hell, and I'm not kidding. Well, thank you. So, so um, I worked on that. I, I was doing West Wing. Uh, you know, it was just, you know. Uh, you the, had a deadline. Uh, yes, I had a deadline. Um, they gave you how much notice? Six months, a year? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, probably about th three months before, uh, I, I had the ideas. And the key for me is to... Um, you know, it, it's almost these sad little, actually, Josh, Josh Molina sure. mo mocked these. Uh, I didn't, I, 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 in, in, in my, tr my trailer, uh, I had put up a, a, a little post-it, I think when I was writing this thing, Molina, <laughs> it all comes back. You better believe it. Like, I, uh, do, like, it's embarrassing, like little, you know, aphorisms like progress, not perfection, you know, begin, you know, I have these little, you know, it's where I go to the bathroom. And you allowed God's Melina sake. to see these? No, I did not. He snuck in, <laughs> okay. which is when he stole my stationery and wrote a homoerotic note <laughs> to, uh, uh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. No, no. But I have things like you're, you're progress, standing. not per, you know perfection. Just begin, you know, uh, corny stuff that I don't want anybody to see any more than I want them to see my dirty Q-tips. All right. Okay, and it's my private place. Mm -hmm. And I walk in there, and in Josh's handwriting is, you know, I am balding. I will not work again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of. But he wrote, yes, that was when he was stealing my stationery to write a h vaguely homoerotic letter <laughs> to Jimmy Smits. <laughs> That's not true. That is true. <laughs> and on, on Valentine's Day. Sure. When else are you going to send it? Valentine's Day, I'm at work, and Jimmy Smits, uh, who's the sweetest guy in the, uh, I don't, you know, nice. You know, sure. You know, <laughs> yeah. Great guy, but a very kind guy. You're not attracted to him, though. No, I'm not attracted to him. I'm not attracted. Don't even, you know, I, sure. Uh, not even in a Viking. Not, no. You know, it's not that kind of relationship. He's kind of looking at me across the room. I'm like, hey, he goes. And I, I go over and he hugs me <laughs> and he goes, the flowers are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and that note, I mean, that's more than I did for my girlfriend. <laughs> and and, and at that point, you have no idea. I mean, it only takes a few seconds for your brain to scream Melina. No, it does not scream Melina. <laughs> it screams awkward. It just screams. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I didn't. I, 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 if ten minutes later, I realized, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I said, what are you talking about? And he said, the flowers and the note, it meant so much to me. You know, I'm like, oh. I think it was then. That it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. We have to get Melina. I'll tell you, truly, mm -hmm. what I almost did. All right. Um, I was going to pay somebody uh, $2,000. <laughs> you, you said you, that... You, you, Settled on the amount. You knew the amount that it I would take. I knew the amount. Right. Who said that they were going to do it. And then they chickened out. Wow. 
I was going to get Josh Molina in the SAG Award Memoriam Reel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, that's a topper. That's you an absolute topper. No. Just kill him. And you had you had an inside man. Just kill him yeah. and put him like right after, you know. Sure. Fill in the blank. But you had you had an inside guy. No applause, but just oh god, I didn't know he died. <laughs> <laughs> no applause is the best part. Yeah, because they're basically applauding right through the Paul whole thing. Newman. Yeah. What is that agent negotiation like? <laughs> by the way, <laughs> you know, okay, uh, you know, get him near the end of the reel. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't put him after Tom Hanks. No, he doesn't follow. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't follow. He doesn't follow. <laughs> no, he closes. But can you imagine? Uh, I was that close. So you had an inside guy. You had someone in the editing. I bag. said you can just put this in. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody's going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take somebody from the thirties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was a star back in the in the early days of the talking. And then the guy said, "I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll get fired." I'm like, oh. Well, yeah, he would have got fired technically. Someone would. Perfect. Though. Oh God, no, no, that's a topper. There's no beating. That. There's no beating that. But to go back, oh, yes. three months, uh, uh, just trying to make it a little better every day. But the problem is, uh, the problem is with uh, you know, it's. Um, what are you writing now? I'm writing a screenplay. Right. And how are you enjoying that? Do you have a deadline? Um, uh, yes, but are you adhering to it? I do, but I haven't been, uh, you know, life is, you know, interfering. And as I'm saying this, I feel like I, you know, I just need to make progress every day instead of, um, uh, you know, think I'm either a winner or a loser. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. That's the nirvana that I actually find in it. The first draft, which has often been said, is the hell. Well, there's the, you know, the Ann Lamott thing of but, but to crappy me, first draft. Uh, you know, d take the pressure off and just write a first draft. I don't, I don't have an outline. I don't have cards. I have a beginning and an ending. Right. And then I get to create all the, st all the steps necessary to get from A to B. And in that journey, I know, first for many years as a performer, and then many years as an actor, and then as a writer, I'm going to rewrite the motherfuck out of this. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much would this first draft possibly mean? It's not even a skeleton. It's right. what a skeleton wants to be. Right. It's right. nothing. Right. And then so, you get through it and you learn more than you thought you'd learn. Yes. Yeah. You can't go back and reread a word, let alone a sentence, when you start the next day's work. You can't. You have to just keep moving forward. It is all about progress. Right. It is all. And the only way that I found uh, I had a shot in hell of accomplishing that was to simply say, this literally matters not. Whatever I'm writing will not at all be in the seventh draft that I'll let someone read. Right. None of this. Right. I have, this is literally the step that I'll go, yeah, that was. Right. Well, look, and, you know, I know that from other, uh, you know, I know it from, you know, I did a Broadway play a couple of years ago, and you do, you know, you do the opening night, and it's like, you know, it's going to be a couple of weeks till I find this. You know, and there's people staring at you and, you know, but judging But that's you. the thing with the writing is it's just you. And either the pad bobbing the, in a sea of failure in the computer, no, whatever, however you choose, and then there's reflecting devices nearby. Right. But there's no collaborative. There's no. Right. There's no buddy in the other room waiting who paid with seats. Right. Uh, there's just you and, and your house. Right. And there's and so only so many rooms to walk through before you can get. Now, do you give yourself a back. deadline when you're writing? No. No. Unless someone else gave me one, that has a, certainly occurred. Do you uh, do you have a certain time when you write every day? I mean, how do you uh, do? You, is no. Is, no, I'm no good with the uh, with the with the calendar and the schedule because that represents pressure, mm. and I don't I don't th that doesn't serve me at all in the process. Right. So a deadline is we need this by, and then um, I. I was never a big fan of school, so I never even learned the ability to think about, I'll do this in the 11th hour, so I, uh, the idea of, of that doesn't 
really apply to the creative thing. Right. And also, as a comedian, you know, when you find your voice, because people say, where do you get your material from? When you find your voice, it's all material. Right. Everything, that cup, the spoon, it's all whatever you right. want it to be. Right. Because I have a voice that I'll represent it as. Right. Be it sarcasm or whatever. Right. Uh, so, to me, it was always, and it has always been about, well, I've got the voice. I just found the idea that I want to write. Right. Well, it's interesting. Now I'm just going to throw up everything. The first thing I wrote was I was supposed to direct a West Wing, and I pitched, I was pitching a thing to John Wells that I wanted to work on with another writer that I would direct, but it was a story idea. And he, he said, uh, it's a good idea, write a treatment. I said, I don't know what that is. He said, just write it on a page. Write the story. And then I came in the next day, he said, okay, it's good. He said, just write another five pages. And then uh, after three days, he said, I need a script in 10 days, if you can do it. So it was, in a way, it was good yeah. because it got me past the radio station K fucked in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, have you ever read Anne Lamott's mm -hmm. stuff? She has, she has a, a, a great book on writing called Bird by Bird. Um, a great book you're writing, you said. A, a book on writing. A book on writing. Called Bird by Bird, which is, uh, and she, one of her big things is just splat that first draft. Throw it up. Vomit. Vomit. So you've got to that place now where you can do that if you have a deadline of a 10 days. Yeah, I could, yeah, yeah. So the screenplay you're working on now. Also, the thing I realized, uh, 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 the thing that helped me with writing when I would get uh, psychotic about it is when I think of writing, it's, it's almost what I'm talking about with like the dog being a good actor. If I think of, oh, I'm a writer, it's like being a writer is some different thing over there. If I think of it as uh, talking on paper, right? Yeah, you know, uh, that's that's a psychological arena I can function in. Right. You know, uh, uh, if I think of acting as you know, I don't know, a bunch of common sense and trying to make the story truthful and honest, you know, mm -hmm. then I can do it. If I think of you know, you got to go to Juilliard and learn a weird skill that other people have that you don't, it's I think it's crap. Were you drawing from the people of Connecticut from your university days or some of the stooges at Juilliard when? while tripping through a part of your career Jamie likes to call yuppie scum 80s villain. Yeah. Well, you know, in the 40s it was a Nazi. Mm -hmm. In the 80s it was a white guy with a job. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just pasty enough? And I was just... And blonde enough. Uh, yeah, you know, I was reminded of this the other day. I, 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 I was in New York, uh, and it was one of the few times I got recognized, and, and this homeless guy goes, hey, you know, I know you. And I, and I said, uh, he said, you're an actor. I'm like, you know, purple yeah. rose of Cairo, you know, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, why do you always play assholes? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and just on the, uh, the other day in Dallas, um, there was a guy, uh, we're shooting a scene in this parking lot, and this guy goes by, he goes, yo, you're an actor, you're an actor. Uh, you know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. And he goes, weekend at Bernie's. And nice, like, nice, <laughs> nice, <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> I'm like screaming, fuck you at this guy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, uh, look, I, and that's another reason, uh, you know, uh, what, Stanley Tucci. Okay? Sure. Stanley, block. Stanley, who I know, is obviously a, a, a wonderful, wonderful actor. Stanley comes out uh, to Hollywood, and Hollywood doesn't know what to do with him. And they say, you know what you are? You're a dick in a Pauly Shore movie. <laughs> mm. And if you know that kind of talent, you know that's what you do with it. And... He uh, is, uh, you know, driving home, and then he did a movie, you know, where he kind of took a uh, big night, you know, where he kind of took, and, you know, I don't know why, I mean, it's the, it's the other thing that I think about uh, with writing. I mean, Hollywood owes nobody an exploitation of the 
nether regions of their possible acting talents. No. Um, oh, no. And by the way, this is not us asking you to answer for anything. Believe me. Uh, but I, Believe I just me. There's apologize. a little something out there called Joanna Man and a few other examples that, that I'll be the last person to ask jo you. Joanna Man? To ask you to answer to anything. Listen, I think I showed. If you have a filmography. I think I showed. Deal of a lifetime. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Million dollar mystery. Stop when you can. Oh, my God. <laughs> they like to hurt. <laughs> If you have a filmography, uh, I, I think I, I think I showed, mm -hmm. you know, just into the versatility question. That uh, you know, in Nerds too, I think I sh Nerds in Paradise, I showed <laughs> that I could not only play an asshole, I could play an asshole on vacation. <laughs> I just want to say that it's not a coincidence that the police are arriving. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> when I walked in here, I thought, wow, it's like a cross between The Tonight Show and a crystal meth lab. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, sir. <laughs> You're not wrong. In fact, that's what we call it. <laughs> the Tonight Show meth lab. Um, all right. I want you to start thinking in terms of where you might go with your Larry King game. Just start to... Oh, I, I, gotta, uh, I, I, I know exactly where I want to go. Okay. And do you believe we've been at this an hour, uh, 110 minutes, coming up on two hours? The answer is no. I can't believe it. Because we've just been talking. We've just been talking. Why do I say it like I invented cheese? Hmm? Didn't you invent cheese? That's it. Um, really, let's just spend the last couple of minutes talking about Molina, because <laughs> there's no greater thing. Um, how much are you digging the the Colin Hanks kid? Because he seems about him. as cool and wonderful. I mean, I know his dad. I've worked with his dad. You, sir, are not his dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't imagine an acorn racing too far from that particular mighty oak. And 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 as much as Tom likes to dabble in in an occasional cynical thought, and his hilarious every time he does, he's just a great fucking guy. And so I know, I knew before I met Colin that he had somehow done a terrific job. And then when you meet this kid, it's like, He's oh, a great, he's a wonderful guy. Oh my God. He's a wonderful guy. I was joking with him because we were doing, uh, we were doing publicity and, you know, uh, he's got a, a great sense of humor about it. But of course, people always ask him, you know, about his dad. Um, and uh, I, I called him after I did this, like a bunch of radio tours, and I said, I have contact father issues. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want to talk about you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Colin's just, uh, uh, you know, Colin's uh, a, a, a wonderfully well adjusted, uh, sane, hilariously funny, uh, uh, you smart, know, smart uh, you know, great actor. I mean, he's been a total, total pleasure. Uh, you just mentioned something that... And uh, by the way... Yes? Dad's a prick. What an asshole. <laughs> a bigger prick you will not find. Yeah. And I don't mean no, physically. No, 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 no. No. Uh, radio tours, love them? Actually, there's... I always say if, you, if an actor complains about anything, slap him for a day and a half. However... Yes. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Abs absolutely. Actually, I think there's one on, on YouTube. Perry, Perry and I, we're doing... We're doing um, you know, it's like five, it's six in the morning. It's and, five, something. And we've sure. done like twenty-five of these things, and you know, we're we're sitting there, and they go to Atlanta, and they say, "So you've both had these characters that were very successful. You know, what's it like to? Um, uh, is it hard to shake a character that you're so well known for?" And I just said, uh, "Well, you shook your Chandler this morning, didn't you?" <laughs> and Matt, uh, we completely. It became gaggle, Lost giggling, it. giggling, nine-year-old, giggling, giggling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you can't. Uh, you know, you can't. Uh, you can't complain uh, because, uh, because nobody wants to hear it. A and nobody wants to hear it. Z. However, right. Since it's just the two of us. <laughs> holy fuck. Hey, so we're uh, talking this morning with Bradley Winford. Hey, Bradley, you got this new show. Uh, what's it about? Now, uh, the then first then, nine then. times you hear it, you can get through it. On right. 37, right. you have to 
You have to. You, you, you have to. You have to act. Have you done them two days in a row? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But not a thrice. No. Yeah. I've, I recently did the two days in a row, and I, I literally called an hour after I finished day one and said, there is no way I'm doing day two. Just call it off. Call everyone. <laughs> Cut to 5.30 the next morning. I'm sorry, Atlanta. What? Yeah. There's no way out. You can't. They're booked. I just have this weird... Does publicity work? No. <laughs> No, and I say this. I, say, I, mean, I don't think it. I, I really. Well, don't you think mentioned it earlier in passing. Nobody, in terms of TV, they want to discover. An audience wants to discover. One of the joys of this show or that show is people being able to say, "Have you seen Breaking Bad? Because it's unfucking believable." And they go, "What are you talking about?" It's By the way, I think the ancillary. Uh, if anybody cares about television, I think. These like uh, Breaking Bad, all the Showtime shows, The Wire, we The Wire, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Although The Wire remained, I guess, because of The Sopranos, under the yeah, um, uh, Mad Men, Mad Men. What you know? First of all, when those networks do a show, you know they're going to do everything to keep it on, okay? And then the shows get some good reviews. The shows run for a while. Then the publicity kicks in. Right. And they're saying, hey, you know, there's a really interesting show here that, that this person can tell you is worth discovering. I think all that front-loaded publicity... Bullshit. I, I, I think it's... You might as well just burn cash and then abachi. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the end of the day... By and the way, as an actor, I'm sitting there going, yeah... I think the show I'm on is really good. Yeah. What are you supposed to say? What, literally, at the end of the day, what are you supposed to say? So, early on, you sort of have to learn. Well, it's uh, six minutes or how, nine minutes or whatever it has to be. I'm going to be funny talking about these things and never actually talk about the show. I always feel embarrassed, too, for the, you know, like the cameraman who's, like, seeing you go through the all the same right. material yeah. over and over again. I mean, yeah, that, you just that see. That can't be healthy. <laughs> It's yeah. like radiation of the soul. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else to include, Jamie? Is there any people? Oh, look at that. You threw up an interesting one. Last tweet to five, sir, and then I will allow you oh. to do... Go ahead. Sorry. No? It's fine. I just... Uh, the reason I didn't use this one is that technically it's a tweet four. <laughs> they forget they Son of a to... bitch. But it's good. But I like the other ones. And if I wouldn't have said anything, probably nobody would have noticed. Jim McNicholas? Is that the one we're talking about? All right. You ready, sir? Tweet four. On me. Tweet four. Christopher Walken or Kevin's Christopher Walken? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Stage or TV? I, I hear. Can I do Chris Walken doing There's No Business Like Show Business? Please. Okay. There's no business like show business <laughs> like no business. I know. <laughs> right. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. Because at some point, at some point, there has to be an interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And even s Swedish. I, yeah, even <laughs> Swedish. Uh, what were the? Uh, <laughs> That's the test. I need somebody who, somebody who's doing a play. In, um, the actors were upset because because it was like a checkoff play and. And Chris Walken was in it, and the audience would laugh, and he'd like, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> do a Jack Benny. He'd like acknowledge it, right? And so this poor stage manager had to go talk to this big star, and say, and, you know, and she said, Chris, I don't know if you, if you know, but um, when the audience is laughing, you're actually looking out and acknowledging it. <laughs> and, and he said, I know they're there. They know I know they're there. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, yeah, so the fourth wall means nothing. <laughs> stage or TV? Did you see that guy on stage? Did you see the guy on uh, Saturday Night Live who does... Denzel? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Pharaoh. Yeah, he's uh, he's, uh, he's Pharaoh. pretty much going to take over the world the next year. I knew it. Year. I knew that was going to happen. He's going to own everything. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's ridiculous. That is 
Him and uh, it's also, uh, has he done Sam Jackson yet? Because he's got to have a Sam Jackson. Uh, I don't believe he has. But I he, like his Will Smith. His Will Smith. Oh, is, and he was like, whoo! His <laughs> Eddie Murphy, though, I think has been his best so far. Well, listen to us. I haven't seen him. We're like idiots. But uh, the Already. Denzel was. The kids the Will went on, Smith the kids really went on television for five weeks and no one can stop talking. Yeah, five weeks he's been on? Well, how long is the new season? Yeah, five, yeah, about five, six, five six weeks. weeks. Jesus, I've been on like 20 years. Nobody gives a shit. I, what? But I love the advice on Tendo, man. <laughs> Adam Sandler or Robin Williams? Uh, they're both incredibly nice. Whoa. They are. <laughs> James, yes. James Garner or Martin Sheen as president? See? Uh, See what they're uh, doing? Why? why? See what it's they're like, doing? what is this? Sophie's Choice? <laughs> they're both nice. <laughs> no. uh, uh, Martin. Uh huh. Yeah. Give me, uh, Two minutes of working with that stellar. I love Mark. I, you know, I think the thing that made the uh, the show work is that everybody. Uh, it's funny. I remember. Uh, it was, uh, this was a great Molina line that I actually take credit for. Um, uh, I'll, I'll get back to it. Um, no, no, go right. No, out. no, I'll get back to it. Okay. Um, uh, People used to say, I, you know, the criticism of the show was, it's a fantasy. And uh, I used to say, no, you know, uh, to, a, uh, to a reporter, I think I pissed some people off in the spring because I said, no, you know what a fantasy is? Uh, you know, a mobster in therapy. <laughs> you know, we'd all like to believe that there's some introspection uh, going on. But I always felt that the notion that there are five people surrounding the president who really believe in him is not, actually not that much of a fantasy. Yeah. Uh, and I think that our protective affection uh, and joy uh, uh, that we all felt with Martin is what really, you know, pulled that show, pulled that show together. Josh. Um, and by the way, honestly, I think The Wire, The Sopranos, I don't know where West Wing is, but those shows, I, 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 I truly... I think are better than the white. I don't know. I, maybe I shouldn't say it. Um, but <laughs> Molina, we, uh, you know, the, the West Wing kept, w kept winning. Um, and we never thought, you know, we always thought the first year was the, like the Sopranos was going to win the award. And then we, of course, they would win the second year because we won before we won. Then we won the third year, then the fourth year. And I think uh, uh, Gandolfini said, Jesus, I don't know why we come anymore. And uh, Josh, I thought it was a great line. He said, uh, "Wow, I thought he played Tony Soprano. I didn't realize he played Big Pussy." <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! A funny line. Wow! It's wow. a funny line. <laughs> oh, that is your camera, sir. When you're ready to share your Larry King at the two-hour mark, you'll be off the hook. Although I did want to hear about uh, Boeing. Boeing. We'll get to that next time. Tonight, unimaginable human suffering in Haiti as the cholera epidemic spreads. You'll see images you'll never want to remember. And later, Liza Minnelli. <laughs> go, to the go to the phone and tell me what the city is. As the, as the Go to the phone. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what the city is. On, I just love the segues. <laughs> yeah. Later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is it. The orphan son of Don Popeil. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Don? Ron. Uh, yes. Ron. Don, Don's better. Whatever. Don's, Don's better because Larry would fuck it up. I'm sitting on my <laughs> testes. <laughs> Oh, no more calls. Pencils down. <laughs> we have a winner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, means a great deal to us on many levels, one of which you've, you've rid us all of our uh, love for Josh Molina. Really? And, and he is, can't thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, truly, at the end of the day, he's a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the button. <laughs> all we right. got it. Sit there uncomfortably while I say good night. Uh, I want to thank uh, each and every damn one of you who uh, chose to join us live, and then those of you that are listening and watching on the iTunes after the fact, thank you so much. Uh, 
We will be back next week with the uh, with the Joel McHale. Check the calendar. We've got a lot of fun folk coming up. Um, and uh, I hope uh, your move is not as painful as ours. Uh, I wonder what, yes, I wonder what the crew's been up to. You know, we've been up here in here a couple of hours, and I have to wonder what the hell have my crew's been up to for the last two hours, because I know they sure as fuck haven't been working. Fall back, set your clock back. Oh, that's a daylight oh, savings humor. Went ahead and put the clock back. Hmm. Somebody else comes up. I wonder to if the calendar and says, oh, oh no, now, now, it's the, now it's three. Now o'clock. it's two hours back. Oh dear, couldn't be a third, could it? No, this. Wow. Oh, well, I wonder where could this go? There's three, and then same guy. Did he forget he did it? <laughs> Is that <laughs> nice? Nice. Yeah, you give us three, we know it's coming, and then you want to take it, and you want to go left. Yeah, they say comedy comes in threes. Or I liked also that J Mac is now in the in the role of uh, you know what I'll be the stooge. I'll be the guy who's half naked. I'll be the guy that's sitting on the well, toilet. Okay, because be the... you got you got Emily, so she's she's the girl. She's classy. She's the gr- yeah, she's the she's girl. She's a classy lassie. So you got she's not gonna... because Negrin is clearly the romantic lead. Negrin is the romantic so, lead. Negrin and then is Mike, my romantic lead. Mike has yeah. got like uh, a whip and uh, yeah, Mike's choppers. like the boss. Joppers. Yeah. Jop I had the person. choppers. Jop hers. Okay. Um, that's it. That'll do it. So until next time, and as always, get out of my face. He's all of the rainbows, but none of the rain. He's dry. He's scared.